Welcome once again to today's Rowdy.com Big 3 talking NASCAR with Buzz Cutler. I'm Bass Masters. The sounds you hear in the background, acoustic foam going up in our new Rowdy studio. It's being built out as we speak. Here's a little bit of footage you will, we'll let you watch while we talk NASCAR of the actual construction of our actual new studio. It's a historical moment, Cutler, but what is today's first big issue? Well, issue number one, I want to talk a little bit about Elliot Sadler. Let's first hear what he had to say regarding his win in the Craftsman Truck Series. It's not the Craftsman Truck Series. No, is it's it? the Camping World Truck Series. In the Truck Camping Series. World Truck Series at Pocono this past weekend. It's recent and it's today, but it feels like the biggest win in my career and the reason I say that is um, you know there's a lot of naysayers out there and there's a lot of people that you know writing me off and, and not giving me um, a chance to be able to make a comeback and, and be a strong presence again in, in, in this sport and um, to be able to come here today and sit on the pole and win the race and race against people like Casey Kane and Denny Hamlin who I think are two of the best race car drivers up uh, two of the best race car drivers we, we have in our sport, especially at this racetrack, um, means a, just an awful great deal to me. So my question to you, Bassmasters, yeah. is this. Mm -hmm. Does winning in the truck series make it easier for Elliott to find a new ride in the Cup Series? He already said he's not returning to Richard Petty Motorsports in 2011. It makes it easier, but it doesn't make it easy. I mean, I think this guy had a pretty big weekend at Pocono where he was thrust into the national spotlight not once but twice. Obviously, the second time was not the best time for him, but you add it all up, and it does put Elliot Sadler's name back in the forefront of your mind. Makes you think back to when he won a couple races, when he made the chase. You think about Jamie McMurray, and you say, well, maybe this guy can still get it done, but... I, you know what, Bass? But you know it's what? just going to be hard for him to get a ride next I year. understand what you're saying. There's no such thing as bad publicity, and Elliot Sadler had plenty of publicity over the weekend. But if you say that winning in the Truck Series raises his stock vis-a-vis -vis the Cup Series, then you also have to say that Johnny Benson and Ron Hornaday are candidates for well, Cup Series next year. Well, Johnny Benson and Ron Hornaday didn't outrun Denny Hamlin and Casey Kane at Pocono. All right, issue number two. Usually at this point in the season, we've got a pretty exciting, pretty dramatic race to the chase to see who's going to break into the top 12 right. in time for the first chase race in New Hampshire. This season, it almost seems like what you see is what you get. There's not going to really be any changes come New Hampshire. You know, we ran into our buddy Bob Pockers and seen daily in the hallway here at our new world headquarters earlier today, and we were talking about the top 12 in the chase, and I think we all felt that if you look at the way the cars are running right now, it's hard to see the uh, specifically the Hendrick cars of Mark Martin and Dale Earnhardt Jr. outrunning any of the Roush cars or Clint Boyer to get into the chase or Tony Stewart, which are essentially the guys that they can catch right Tony now. Tony Stewart is on fire, as we would expect him to be in the summer. I don't see them passing 10th, Tony. 11th, and 12th. Um, Greg Biffle, mm -hmm. uh, Carl Edwards, and Clint, and Clint Boyer. Boyer. Greg Biffle and Carl Edwards definitely have turned things around. Uh, by virtue of the last few races, Clint Boyer seems vulnerable, but does he seem he vulnerable seem that enough? Vulnerable. Does he seem vulnerable enough that somebody in as bad shape as Dale Earnhardt Jr. is going to be able to catch him? I don't think so. And Mark you know, Martin, you look at Clint, let's be honest about Mark Martin. The only reason he had a decent finish at Pocono is because of a two-tire call. Well, and Clint Boyer had a, a worse finish than maybe you would have expected because of the incident with Kurt Busch and Jimmy Johnson. Clint Boyer's running very well right now. He didn't start up front at Pocono, but made a lot of progress before that. So I don't think Clint Boyer is running poorly right now, and I think he's he's in pretty good shape. Now, of course, there's a lot of bad luck out there in the racetracks to be had. You have one bad race, Clint Boyer wrecks out, and Mark Martin runs top 10, and those two guys flip spots. So that could happen any time. But if you ask me, based on how the guys are running right now, who will be in the chase? The guys that are in there right now. I agree with you. Now let's move on to issue number three. You know, we've heard lots of rumors about Richard Childress Racing starting a fourth team again, or restarting a fourth team. Maybe Paul Menard would catch that ride. Paul Menard, it's interesting to compare him to Casey Mears, who was in that fourth RCR car yeah. last season. Well, if you look at average finishes, this is certainly the best uh, season of Paul Menard's career. If you look at top tens, this is the best season of Paul Menard's career. He's running pretty well, uh, all things considered. If you compare that to Casey Mears' average finish during his career, this season, Paul Menard looks a lot like Casey Mears, except that Casey Mears ran for Richard Childress and Rick Hendrick. 
Paul Menard's running. No, no disrespect to Richard Petty Motorsports, but that team's not as good of a team. Well, so and you can't, I think Paul Menard is an intriguing, intriguing driver. But the key here has to be sponsorship. Well, exactly, it has to be. And and you got to ask the question, Cutler. You have to wonder: Does this guy get more because his father's company is basically sponsoring him? Does he get more than your average twentieth place driver would get? Well, you know, one of the reasons, the prime reason that RC cited for not continuing the four car experiment was that they couldn't find sponsors for Casey Mears. Obviously, Paul Menard erases that problem altogether. Richard Childress also maintains that the reason they were off last year had nothing to do with being distracted by a fourth car. Casey Mears, I think he held pretty flat his entire career. Paul Menard, on the other hand, seems to be on an upswing, seems to have more life ahead of him than KC Mears. And and again, compare Paul Menard to Elliot Sadler. I still think Paul Menard might come out ahead in that equation. You know why he would come out ahead? Let's be honest. Because of the He's got shots, a sponsor. And he's got money. He's shots. got a sponsor. Kind of like yours. That's huge these days. Huge. All right, that's been your right on Big Three from the new studio. We're the, getting ready. The new in progress studio. Yeah, it's it's getting ready. We'll be we'll be in here full fledged shortly. You're going to love it. You're going to love some of the things coming at Rowdy.com. For Cutler, I'm Bass. Buck should be here tomorrow, I do believe. Oh, joy. Oh, joy, a rapture. We'll see you next time on the Rowdy.com Big Three. Rowdy.com. Say it like it is. Say what like it is. Rowdy.com.